Hello, I'm here to go over quest eight, which is on freefall. If you want to look at a particular question, please use the timestamps in the description to skip to that question. So our first question is, a heavy object and a light object are dropped at the same time for at rest, from at rest in a vacuum. When does the heavier object reach the ground compared to the lighter object? Well, if it's in a vacuum, there's no air resistance. If they're dropped from the same height, they're gonna fall the same distance. And since the acceleration is the same for both objects, uh, near the surface of the Earth, it's 9.8 downwards. So every second, it speeds up by 9.8 meters per second. So it'll reach the ground at the same time. All right, uh, the next one, an object, this is number two, an object is shot vertically upwards into the air with a positive initial velocity. What correctly describes the velocity and acceleration of the object when it's at its maximum? Okay, so when it gets up to its maximum, it comes to rest. Gravity doesn't turn off. And so there's a still an ex a gravity, an acceleration downwards. So if we said that it had an initial positive velocity, that sets the coordinate system, that sets that up as positive. So it reaches zero velocity and it has a negative or downwards acceleration. All right, number three, suppose that a freely falling object were somehow equipped with an odometer. An odometer is a device on your car that measures how far you go. It always counts up. It just keeps getting bigger and bigger as you go. So if you drove from home to school and then from school back to home, you would get a distance to get to school and then another distance to get home. So your odometer would go up by that total distance or twice the distance that you are from school when you started. All right, would the readings of the distance fallen each second indicate equal or different falling distances? So it speeds up as it goes. So that means that every second it goes farther and farther, meaning each step it takes, each second, it goes, you know, like for the first second, it might only fall this far. For the next second, it would fall four or three times that size. So you've gone this far for the first second and then much bigger for the second second. And then for the third second, you go even farther. So it speeds up and goes faster and faster and faster. So the uh, you get greater distances with each successive second. Assume a freely falling object is somehow equipped with the speedometer. So a speedometer tells you how fast you're going. It's like on your car, it's, it's a dial or a, some cars have digital uh, tell you how fast you're going. Uh, on a planet where the acceleration due to gravity is 20 meters per second, um, that's actually 20 meters per second per second, how much would the speed reader, uh, the, the speed reading increase each second. So it would go 20, mile, uh, 20 meters per second for the first second, and then 40 meters per second for the second, at the end of the second second, and then 60 meters per second after falling for three seconds. So you're increasing your speed by 20 meters per second every second. So your speed would increase by 20 meters per second each second. All right, the next one. Question five, if you drop an object, its acceleration toward the ground is 10 meters per second per second. 
which is also 10 meters per second squared, if you threw it downwards instead, what would be its acceleration? Well, gravity is the same. No matter which direction you throw the object, gravity is the same acceleration at the, near the surface of the Earth. So you would still be accelerating or speeding up downwards by the same amount. So acceleration and velocity are not the same thing. Velocity tells you how fast you're going. Acceleration tells you how much you're changing your velocity. So you would still have the same 10 meters per second acceleration, regardless of which way you threw it. Okay, question six. A carpenter working on top of a tall building drops a hammer. In one second, it falls one story down from the top. In one more second, how far will it have fallen? So to answer this one, you need to know the relationship between the distances fallen for each second. So if you release something from rest, it starts at a velocity of zero. And we'll just pick the top up here as being initial position of zero. Now it falls for one second. So it goes down and it gets to here. On Earth, we'll say that the acceleration due to gravity is 9.8, but it's easier if we round that up to 10. It's about 9.8. 10 is close to 9.8. So now after one second of falling, so this is a delta T of one second, it's now sped up and it's moving at 10 meters per second downwards. We'll say downwards is positive. Now, how far has it fallen? Well, the average speed here is five meters per second. And so if it's done that average speed for one second, it's now at a position of five meters. It's fallen five meters which is actually significantly bigger than a story. One, one story is maybe three meters. So this, these are really big stories, uh, building stories. Now let's wait another second. So it speeds up again. Now its velocity is up to 20 meters per second. Well, what's its average speed? Well, it's 15, 15 meters per second average speed. And if you travel at that average speed for one second, you add 15 meters of distance. So you've fallen an additional 15, so now your position is 20 meters. And then if you fall another second, you speed up even more. You're up to 30 meters per second. This was a delta T of one second. This is another delta T of one second. The average velocity for this one second is 25 meters per second. And if you travel at an average velocity of 25 meters per second for one second, you go 25 more meters. So you've fallen down to 45 meters now. Notice the differences here. This is five meters of difference. Your delta X is five meters. This is 15 meters of difference. This is 25 meters of distance. So we say that this follows a pattern of odd numbers. If this is one, if it stands for one, then this would be three and this would be five. And it just continues one, three, five, seven, nine, as it goes farther and farther and faster and faster. So for this question, if the hammer fell one story in the first second, then in the next second, it would have fallen a total of four stories.
So this would have been at two seconds. This would have been at one second. And this would have been at the beginning. So going back, it would be four stories below the top. All right, next question, number seven. Consider drops of water that fall from a dripping faucet. As they fall, they, now, this is very, this is like the hammer, except you've got hammer after hammer after hammer being dropped. So every second, this carpenter drops another hammer. And we want to watch the hammers as they fall. So do the hammers all fall staying the same distance apart as they fall? No, they don't. So I'm going to go back to the drawing here with the hammers, but now we're going to add drops of water. So if the first drop of water started here, after one second, it would reach here and we'd get a new drop of water. Now after another second, the first drop of water would fall to here. This, the second drop of water would fall to here and we'd get a new drop of water. After another second, the first drop of water falls to the bottom down here this second drop of water fell to here, the third drop of water fell to here, and we get a new drop of water. So the distances are increasing for each second of fall, which means that this drop of water is getting farther and farther away than the second drop of water. And the second drop of water as it falls would get farther and farther away from the third drop of water. They're both falling, but they're traveling at different speeds. They got started at different times and they're both speeding up and speeding up. Right, so back to the question. Uh, they get farther apart as they fall. Right, number eight, if you drop a rock from a height of 18 meters and it accelerates at G, which is one earth gravity, 9.8 meters per second squared, and then it dr hits the ground after a time, your time will probably be different than this time. Uh, if, you drop, if you drop the same rock from half the height, what will be its acceleration? It's gravity. We're still on Earth. We still have the same acceleration. So it would still be the same acceleration. It's the same. Now, it's not asking about speed. It doesn't ask about how fast it's going. It's asking about how much it's speeding up, the acceleration. So don't get fooled by velocity and acceleration. Velocities will change for free fall, but accelerations will always be the same. If you're, if you're next to the same planet, your acceleration will be 9.8 or next to earth, you'll be 9.8. It doesn't matter what the object is. It doesn't matter how fast it's going. The acceleration is always 9.8 downwards or towards the center of the earth. All right, number nine. A multi-part question here so it's gonna be 9 10 yeah 9 and 10 so for the first question uh, we're told a projectile is fired straight up with a speed of 10 meters per second approximately how long does it take to reach its highest point we're going to use the idea that things change their speed by 10 meters per second squared which or 10 meters per second each second uh, and that happens for every object, no matter what its speed is or which direction it's going. And we're gonna combine that with the idea that when something reaches the top of its, of its arc, of its movement, it's zero velocity, it reaches zero. So if something's moving at 10 meters per second and it loses 10 meters per second every second, 
how long would it take to reach zero velocity? Well, one second. It's like saying you start with $10, you spend $10 every second. How long does it take to reach zero dollars? Well, you only have one $10 bill. So as soon as you spend it, you're at zero. If it takes you one second, it's one, it's one second. Uh, let's say you started off at 30 meters per second. How long would it take to reach the top? Well, you reach zero velocity at the top. So if you're changing your velocity by 10 every second, it would take you three seconds to lose all your velocity to reach zero. It's like saying you start with $30, you spend $10 every second. It takes you three seconds to spend all $30. So for this one, the beginning velocity was 10. Your acceleration, your loss of velocity in this case is 10 every second. So it takes exactly one second. Approximately how long after it's fired does it take to return to its initial position? So it would then fall from its highest point and it travels the same distance in one second downwards that it took to travel in one second going upwards, five meters for that on earth uh, trip. So it would take another second to get back down where it started. So the total time after being fired would be two seconds. Now, if your time, if your speed, if your initial velocity is not 10, you're going to have a different time than what I had because of the, um, yeah, uh, if you had a 40 meter per second initial speed upwards, it would take you four seconds to get to the top and a total of eight seconds to fall back to the ground from the shot from the beginning. All right, so now we're on to number 11. So ignore the 10 up here. This is question number 11. Someone standing at the edge of a cliff throws a ball straight up at a certain speed and another ball straight down at the same initial speed. If, an, if air resistance doesn't matter, if it's negligible, which ball will have a greater speed when it strikes the ground? Well, have the same speed when they hit the ground. It seems like that can't possibly be true, but when an object goes up and gets back to the same height that it started at, it will have the same speed as when it was first thrown upwards. So it goes, let's say you throw an object up at 10 meters per second. After one second, now it's only, well, let's say you throw it up at 20 meters per second. You throw it upwards at 20 meters per second. After one second, it's down to 10 meters per second. After another second, it's at rest. Now, after another second, it's back to 10 meters per second, but going downwards. And then after another second, when it reaches its starting point, it's traveling at 20 meters per second, but going downwards. So it took four seconds to get back to where it started. If you threw it upwards at 20 meters per second. So I'll draw that out quick. So imagine you've got a person standing on a cliff. They throw a ball upwards at 20 meters per second. Now after one second, it's slowed down. I'll make the arrow half as big. So now it's only traveling at 10 meters per second. After another second, it stopped. So it's at zero meter per second. Now it's falling again. It gets to this height, traveling downwards at 10 meters per second. It falls for another second. It gets to its original height and it's falling downwards at 20 meters per second. So it took 
one, two, three, four seconds to get back to its original height, and it's traveling as fast downwards as it was initially when it was launched upwards. So if you're at the same height, at the same altitude, you have the same velocity. Well, the same speed. You have opposite velocities because you're traveling in the opposite direction. Now, if I let it fall, it would speed up again. And it would be going 30 meters per second. And just continue to fall till it hit the ground. So for this answer, the both balls would hit at the same speed or they would have the same speed when they struck the ground. All right, next question. This is number 12. An object is thrown vertically upward before falling for, to a height from which it was thrown, Disgu disregarding air resistance. Which graph represents the velocity of the object with a function of time? So our velocity graphs will always be straight lines. So you can disregard any curved lines for this velocity graph. And then if we choose up as being a positive direction, our velocity would start out positive. And when it got back to where we were at where it was launched from, the same height it was launched from, it would have a downwards velocity. And so that would be a negative velocity. So starts out with a positive velocity, slows down until it reaches the top where it has zero velocity. Then it speeds up falling again and it goes faster and faster and faster. And when it gets to the same height, it has the same speed, but downwards. So we say it's negative. So this has as big a negative value as this has a positive value. All right, on to number 13. So this is 13. An object is thrown upwards from the origin along a positive y direction and caught. Which graph describes the y coordinate of the vol vertical velocity while the object is in the air? Oh, sorry, the vertical motion of the object. So this would be position time. So the y here stands for how high the object is, what we would normally call x in our class. So this would now have bigger and bigger positions until you get to the top, and then it would be decreasing positions until you got to the bottom. And time would always advance. So it would be this shape. Our free fall motions will always have this shape of a position time graph. All right, now we're on to 14, I think. Multi-part problem, so this is 14. What is the magnitude of the instantaneous velocity or speed? Velocity has direction, speed doesn't. Of a freely falling object after so much time has passed. So if we're using this as our acceleration, every time we fall a second, we change our speed by this much. So after one second, we're traveling at 10 meters per second. After two seconds, we're now traveling faster at 20 meters per second. So 30, 40, 50, speeding up, speeding up, speeding up. And after 31 seconds, we would be traveling at 310 meters per second. Uh, I'll show you the math for that. So the equation that describes how fast we're going would be this equation. If your initial velocity is zero because you were at rest, 
Now the final velocity just becomes acceleration times time. If the acceleration is 10, and your time is, let's say, 31 seconds, then that would equal 310 meters per second. Now your answer will probably be different than that if you had a different, look at your numbers, make sure you know what your numbers are. Uh, number part two, this would be number 15. What is the average speed during this 31 second interval? So it started at zero speed. It gets to 310 meters per second speed. What's the average speed? So you'll want to take the average between an initial of zero and a final of whatever you had. So the average we indicate average by putting a bar, a, a, a line without an arrowhead on it, above the variable. You could also say this. But V bar, or average velocity, would be one half of zero plus 310. So you just add the two numbers together and divide by two. So that would be 155 for me. And then my last question, this would be number 16. How far did it fall during this time? The, there's a lot of equations you can use. You could use any of the kinematic equations that had delta x in it. Uh, the easiest one for us would be to use the average velocity equation. It's already got the one half of the vi plus vf in it. We just found that part. So this equation is like one step away from being solved. We just have to multiply by time. So I'm going to use the average velocity equation. So how far you go is equal to the average velocity times how long you fall. This was one half of VI plus VF. I just replaced it with V average because we've already got that. So it's 155. For me, it's 155. For you, it's probably something different. And 31 seconds. So it's well over four kilometers. So 31 seconds of fall, half a minute of fall you've gone almost five kilometers of, of distance. I think that's impressive. Now this is without air resistance, and so this doesn't happen on Earth because we're in an ocean of air. It's like dropping a rock into the water. You'll notice that as it goes down, it, it reaches a, a speed, a constant speed, fairly quickly. It doesn't keep speeding up and speeding up as it falls. And a flat rock will, like, do a weird motion through the water as it falls because the water's in the way. The rock has to push its way through the water. You could think of it that way. Well, in Earth's air, we have to push our way through the air. And so if you're falling, your body has to get the air out of the way as it falls. And eventually it becomes hard enough to get the air out of the way at the speed you're falling at that you are now traveling at a constant speed. Now we'll talk about the forces view of that situation this next unit. But for now, we're going to say that these are without air resistance. These are free fall and free fall means no air resistance. 
that's one of the definitions or, or requirements for free fall motion. All right, last two questions. So this would be 17. Oh, I'm not, not the last two, sorry. Two, oh, oh, two questions that are part one, part two, and then a last question. Okay, this question, this is number 17. A ball is thrown straight up with an initial speed of 90 meters per second. How high does it go? Well, there's a lot of equations we can use. I'm gonna write down what I know so that I can choose an equation that works. We have the initial velocity of 90. Yours might be different. We're asked how high it goes, so that's delta x. I'm just writing these down. I'll show you my paper in just a second. We'll have an acceleration due to gravity, which is downwards, and we're told to use 10. And we're to answer in meters. So this is what I wrote down. The ball was thrown straight up with the initial velocity. It slows down and slows down until it comes to a rest at the top. And we're to figure out how far it goes. So from what I wrote down to begin with, the only numbers I was given was 90 and minus 10. And the minus is because the acceleration is downwards. So it has to have the negative. That's if this is positive, an upwards initial velocity. But from the setup of the problem, from reading it and getting an idea in our heads about what it's saying, we know there's another number there. When it reaches the top, it's zero velocity at the top. It comes to a stop at the very top. So we actually have three numbers and we're asked to find the change in position, the delta x. So we could look at our list of variables here or our list of equations and we wanna find something that has those variables and nothing else. So it would be uh, the fourth equation, and I'll write that down. Uh, could you use the, uh, oh, sorry, I'm wrong. I couldn't use the fourth equation because the delta t, I don't know the time. So I can't use the fourth equation. Uh, if we looked at the fifth equation, we know the final velocity, we know the initial velocity, and we know the acceleration. So this would allow us to solve for the change in position. Now I don't know time, so any equation that doesn't ha that has time in it, I can't use, and that's all of the other equations. So I have to use the last equation, at least as I currently have my, my values. So switching back, I'm going to use the no time equation. And I'm going to solve for this, the change in position. So I'll move everything to the other side. It's good practice to do algebra first. Then I can plug in my values. So the final velocity was zero minus the initial velocity. For me, it's 90. For you, it's something else, probably. Then divided by two times our downwards acceleration. So the top 90 squared becomes 8,100 meters squared over seconds squared with a negative out front because of that negative there. Don't square the negative. And then we have a negative 20 in the bottom. So 8,100 divided by 20 and the negatives cancel. We get 405. And since the meters 
are not the same with the number of exponents. One of them survives, but the seconds cancel out. So we get meters as our units. All right. And then uh, how long is it in the air? This is easy if you understood the idea of that every second you lose 10 meters per second of velocity. So this is, uh, it goes up and comes back down again. So it's gonna be a round trip. I'll go to the drawing here. To get from 90 meters per second to zero would take nine seconds. So the up part of the trip would be nine seconds. It takes nine seconds to lose all 90 meters per second. But then it falls again. It comes back down. It gets back to the same height traveling downwards. And the down trip takes just as long. So the round trip takes 18 seconds. For me, it's for mine. For yours, it will be something else, most likely. All right, last question. If there's no air resistance, what with what speed would drops hit the earth if they fall from a cloud way up in the air, three kilometers up above the earth's surface? Use 10 as the acceleration of gravity. All right, I'll do a picture and write down what I know. So we're starting at 2,634 years will be different. And we know the acceleration of gravity is downwards 10. That's a rounded 9.8. And I'll switch over. So this is my picture. The raindrops are starting with zero velocity and we know that they fall 2,634 meters, or it's the difference between the ground and where they start is 2,000, or mine is 2,634 meters. And we're told that we're on Earth, so we have an acceleration of downwards 10 meters per second squared. Now, I don't know the final velocity. I don't know the time. Uh, but I do know the distance. And so it's asking for uh, at what speed will the drops hit the earth, final velocity. So once they're down here and they're traveling really fast, well, not that fast, but fast, what's their velocity? Again, we're not told the time. So let's see if the no time equation works. One of the things people forget about the no time equation are those squares. So be sure you track those squares. You always make sure you take care of the squares. For us, we want just final velocity, not final velocity squared. So I'm gonna take a square root. The initial velocity up top is zero. So this is just gonna be zero. I can just ignore it. So that goes away. So I get just two times the acceleration times how far it travels. So it becomes two times 10, but downwards 10, times how far it goes. And because it's going falling, that displacement 
is a negative 2, 6, 3, 4 because it's starting high and ending low. So that's a negative displacement. It's like starting on a number line at zero and going down to negative 2,634 on the number line. Your displacement is negative. Well, yeah, that way for you guys. Okay. So that's important because if we didn't have a negative displacement, our square root would crash and we wouldn't get uh, an answer because the calculator would complain that you can't take the square root, although you can. It's a, a more advanced math thing, but. So I'm gonna just type it in as if those negatives canceled and take a square root. So this is what I typed in. I multiplied out those numbers, two times 10 times 2,634. Then I took a square root, the same as raising the answer to the one-half power. So I get 229.5. So that's how fast it's going downwards, 229.5 meters per second. Now it's asking for speed. Uh, what's the speed that the raindrops hit the surface and speeds are always positive so i'll put in a positive answer all right well thank you i hope that helps have a good day